I tell you what, the return of the Premier League means the return of the Premier League Team of the Week. There it is. Selected by Paul Mariner. On your own, Paul, I believe, this week, were you? I don't know why that is. I don't know why the gaps are the only one stupid in. enough but, to answer the email. Listen, Luke Shaw... What email? Scored, <laughs> scored, his, ...scored his first goal in 104 games. I thought he had a terrific game. Well done. Yep. Vertong was absolutely... Bailly. Pardon? Bailly at the back. He played quite well. He played, very, he played great. Leicester scored. Look, that was his best game in the United ship for a long, long time. I thought Walker absolutely bossed it with Mares down the right-hand side uh, uh, for City. Hooray, I mean, he got two goals, what are you going to say? Where's Can't... Richarlison? <laughs> Look, he got two goals, but... It, it, I'm not... I, I wasn't... Yeah, I think I, three. It was a stipulation. I wasn't... Three. I, who, who am I going to take out of the team? Wilson misses a penalty, gets a goal... Well, you actually be out for missing a penalty. No. Leave the man alone. Firmino did not Firmino didn't Firmino, score a goal. Listen, listen, you're in danger of getting in a bit of a mess here because Firmino... With an Firmino. Assist, Firmino, whatever his name is. Is a sensational footballer. What he does on the field is is incredible. Did you have Mendy there? Was Mendy then? No, of course Two not. Assists. I had short left back. Are you paying attention? Sterling. What? No. Le leave the no. man alone. He's, he... I, go on, Gab. You have a go. <laughs> I, I wasn't involved this week. I, I wasn't invited. But Richarlison. Yes. Yeah. He yeah, did. Like he pretty Gab. darn Gab. impressive to me. Listen, leave, listen, he was on the subs bench, uh, Gab. You know full well. Listen, uh, <laughs> I prefer to put somebody who maybe people are not quite aware of in, in the lad from, from Ron Wilson. Uh, from, you um, put Kante in. But on your own he scored in a different role. <laughs> <laughs> For goodness sake. He was on his own this week. Where was Nickel to help him? Uh, he's on his own. And travels. I thought Gab normally did. Gab, don't I'll tell you what, shall, shall, shall I take Manny out and put Rich Alson in? No. I never got asked. I was really gutted. Pardon? Nobody asked me how I helped you. <laughs> oh. Liverpool completely dominate this match from start to finish. Thoroughly deserving of a 4-0 win. Uh, impressive, Craig. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the way Liverpool have been uh, going about it under Klopp. Uh, they've been dynamic from the, the moment he came in. Uh, they've backed him in the transfer market. They got it done early. They've got players to come off the bench now. Uh, Sturridge's been another one. I don't know what's going to happen to him between now and the end of the, the window. Yeah, I don't think he's going to go anywhere, is he? But it? if he's fit, he's not going to play, might play some cup games, but if he's fit to come off the bench along with others, that's a good good avenue to have. Keita is dynamic. If Salah can continue his form, I know Paul's a big fan of Firmino. They've improved the defence. They look as if they've improved the goalkeeping position. There is no reason whatsoever why they can't have a right good bash at Man City. They're not, they're not there. They haven't got the same quality as Man City in terms of the whole squad, but they've certainly improved on last season in terms of what, what he's got to select. And that's all you can ask at this moment in time. They look really good. He yeah, looked good, didn't he, Paul? He looked seamless, absolutely fantastic. Look, we've, all, we've all been waiting. We saw him in the Bundesliga. We, we were waiting for him to come in. We, we thought it would be a good signing. He just came in and fit into that midfield perfectly. Another interesting kid playing today, Gomez. I thought Gomez alongside... the. Van Dijk was, was very, very tidy. Uh, you know, it's another plus for, uh, for Klopp. But going, just talking about Firmino for just a few seconds. You love Firmino, Paul. I, I you do. You can turn any I, conversation I, into Firmino. I think he goes underneath the radar. He knits that front line together. His movement, just coming short, getting on the half turn, sliding balls into Salah and Mane. It's, it's phenomenal. And the way that, that, that Liverpool attack with numbers, you could see with that, with that first goal, they are bombing six players into the box, into the attacking third. It's absolutely remarkable. And most teams will find it very difficult to live with the way that they come out of the blocks in the first 20. I think if you ask City who's your biggest threat, I think Guardiola would say Liverpool. Oh, yeah. I think you see Liverpool, particularly after what happened to them in the, the Champions League last year. But, you know, it's about keeping people fit. You know, you've got to keep yeah. Salah fit. You've got to keep Manny fit. And Paul mentioned Firmino. Fabinho's, Fabinho's to come into the side as well. I mean, look... Klopp doesn't really have many, many excuses here. Fenway Sports Group have backed him mm -hmm. big time in the summer. They're not the finished article. But, boy, I, think that, I really think they're going to have a hell of a season again. And it's going to be exciting. There's no half measures with Klopp's Liverpool. No, it's, it's all or nothing. Right. Yeah. It's all or nothing. They're great to watch. They're fantastic yeah. to watch. They really are. Uh, Gam, what was your takeaway from Anfield? Well, West Ham are, are, are pretty awful, so... Um, we focus on we focus on Liverpool. What I like about this is 
I think he has a bunch of tools. We sort of take it for granted that you know Liverpool are gonna uh, are gonna play a certain way with certain personnel. Obviously, that incredible front three. Um, but what I'm looking forward to is I think this season more so than last year. If people are fit. There's different things uh, that Klopp can do. Uh, if he wants to have a traditional sitting midfielder, he can turn to Fabinho. I think there's going to be certain games when he, maybe he wants to have uh, a genuine center forward in there, maybe use Firmino in different ways. Uh, and I think it's important that Liverpool have those options because I don't think we can take it as a given that Salah is going to have uh, the kind of season he had last year, that he's going to repeat that again this year. So uh, it's a better rounded Liverpool team. No idea what's going on here, I have to be honest. And, uh, you know, we know there were some issues last season with Pogba and Mourinho being, you know, leaving him on the bench. As a guy who's just won the World Cup, he is the linchpin of this side. He is one of the best and most talented players uh, in world football. He has a price tag to go with that. He's got a stature to go with that. He has the ability to go with that. And I, I, just, I just don't know where this is going, but clearly... Clearly, there is something, there is something in his head that he is not happy with. Otherwise, you just wouldn't make statements like that. Not particularly after the first game of the season, when you've hardly had any rest and you you come in and you're a dominant player and you score and your team win. It, it just sort of doesn't quite fit. Gab, what's going on? <sighs> well, <laughs> if only we knew. <laughs> um, but uh, look, I've what I can tell you this is, Paul Pogba is is one of the most intelligent footballers that, that I've ever had a chance to, 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 to speak to and spend time with. And uh, he knows exactly uh, what he's doing when he says things like this, and he's doing it uh, with a reason. This is not, these are not throwaway comments, and, and the fact that he followed it up uh, on Instagram, I think, make that pretty clear. Um, I think he's sending a message to who, to what. I think that's... That's open to speculation. Maybe we'll get more guidance because uh, contrary to what a lot of people think, football clubs and agents employ people to speak to the media and steer, and, and steer them one way or another. Um, but it's obvious that, you know, uh, he went and he did this for a reason. Now, it's, I think it's way too easy, too reductive to go and just make this all about his relationship uh, with Mourinho. Um, I think there, there could well be something deeper there and, and we'll see who picks up the baton. If you're in charge of Manchester United, mm -hmm. if you were Ed Woodward mm -hmm. and you had to choose one or the other, who would you choose? Pogba or Mourinho? I would choose the top man. I, I would choose Paul Pogba because he's the, the heart and soul of that football team. Uh, what he did at the weekend was borderline remarkable. As Mourinho said, playing 80 minutes, scored the winner, brave enough to take it. Look, when you're the top man at the football club and you come out with a statement like that, well, you just don't. You don't come out with a statement like that. If all's rose in the sure. garden, it's just... So the, the un, undercurrent, the undertones here are far-reaching. And, uh, you know, it's very difficult to, to get inside of, of, of people's minds, but it's just shocking that he would come out with that stuff. Well, if, if, there is to, if there is going to be a, some sort of power struggle between... And, I, and we don't know, right? We just don't know. But it's, so, it's so confusing. But say there is. Years ago, or a few years ago, there's only one winner. Sir Alex, wouldn't it? Oh, no, no, sorry, I meant Mourinho. Oh, yeah. No matter what club he was at, yeah. maybe not Real Madrid at, at, yeah. at the end. But as a general term, as a gen generally speaking, most clubs he's been at, he has had kind of had the power because he's been top man and he's, sure. he's delivered. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure he's quite... Oh, well, I'm sure I don't think he's got that mm. anymore. I don't think he has that, the backing of boards that he once had. And I think he's made that more problematic for himself by his rhetoric. Uh, and and so I don't think it's a surefire thing that if there was a, if there was to be some struggle between player and manager that the manager would win to Paul's point because Pog was a big player and Mourinho doesn't carry himself like he once did. I don't think it's a stretch, is it? If I say that City are probably at 65, 70 percent today, yet they still just swatted Arsenal yeah. aside. No, I, I don't think they got out of first gear. To be honest, I, I don't think they had to. Look, everybody's saying, look, it's you know Emery's first game in charge, uh, so we've got to we've got to just cool our jets a little bit. But what I saw of the protection in front of the back four, particularly in the second half. Number one, he's took Rams off. Number two, he took Granit Xhaka off. And he's left the young kid in. I agree with Craig. I think that's a big ask to, to, to put Guendouzi in there for such a massive debut. And, and, and the, the split. I have never seen a goalkeeper play a ball into the set striker's feet 
on the halfway line, and they did it twice today. Words of protection. It's just, I just don't get what he's trying to do with this side. All right, he throws Lacazette on, and you know, maybe he puts Aubameyang up there with him and tries to influence the game in, the, in that way, but they were so exposed. Manchester but, City but could you, have buried them in the But, but you, you say that, yeah. look at the difference of quality. The difference of quality between players in the City team and the no, Arsenal I, one is chalk and cheese, so know, surely it, it, it's too but, soon. Or... Okay, okay, so my one concern then, Dan, is the tactical side of it. It's the first game, I understand, but you don't play against Manchester City so wide open. There's no way you're going to get a point or, or a draw out of it. I think, we're, I think we're going to have to judge Arsenal against other teams because there's, there's just not, a, there's not a, a chance you're going to fix their their problems and their weaknesses in one transfer window. You're just not going to do it, so they're going to have to give them time. Uh, there's no doubt about that. It's not fixed in one window. So it's a long-term project for sure. Whether Emery's the man long-term, I, I, I don't know. Welcome into Extra Time, which has come at a slightly inopportune time, considering what Tiger Woods is now on 17th, Craig. He's, yeah, yeah, he's just on his... Craig may be a little distracted uh, <laughs> during the segment. I'm, 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 I'm you can multitask. I'm multitask. I've got the golf on my phone, and I'm listening to you. Well, we've got to welcome Gab Marcotti back from holiday, which is the subject of our first Hold week. On. Gab is back. Gab's life's a holiday. Gab's life's a holiday. Well, the Gab works rather hard, doesn't he? Really, to be fair. Um, Craig uh, must be happy now. Oh, yeah, I'm always so, happy. People seem to think that you don't get on with Gab. You and Gab go a long way back, don't you? Yes. You've known each other for how long? Quite a long. Years. Yes. <laughs> Why, what did they say? They said, I bet Craig, who is probably my favourite, is happy now. I feel that's tongue-in-cheek. Why? Considering you two... Um, oh, people think partner. whenever we have a disagreement, whether it be me and you or me and Gab or whoever, be, people think because we have a difference in opinion that when we finish a show, we fall out. Yeah. And they say, oh, are you talking... We, we don't... I don't remember us ever falling out. I remember us having lots of difference of opinion. I remember that. expected goals being like the Mount Etna of it all. Wow. <laughs> the, only two the only two people that weren't bothered about that were him and I. Well, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> How was your holiday, Gab? Did you have a lovely time? Well, it was good. And then to, to the guy who, to the guy who, um, yes, Craig and I, I, I think I first met Craig. Oh, goodness. Was well, it I don't even know if I want to date us, but it was... Uh, Probably a couple decades ago, um, but uh, That's a bar. <laughs> yes, we get on great. We're also what three thousand miles apart, um, which probably maybe also helps in, uh, in 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 some ways too. Uh, but no, it's all it's all nonsense. And there, there's other people who uh, who are annoying and irritating, Dan, and most of them tend to be under five foot ten, five foot nine. <laughs> In my heels. <laughs> Who's that. that guy that? What, what, is he still tweeting you? The one that wants you sacked every show. The West Ham fan. Is he still tweeting you? He hasn't tweeted me for a while actually. He'll be back on. <laughs> he loves it. He'll be back on. Great show. Sack oh, first. Tigers just hit a bad one. Oh no. I'd yeah. um, love to see him win again. I just think it's a great story. Right. It is, huh? A lot of people don't like to see people do well, but uh, you know, it's good for ratings, isn't it? I think if we talk about Tiger, I'll rate him. I think he'll come on. <laughs> biased. <laughs> biased. Yes, why are you biased against Tiger Woods? Who are you biased against Tiger? you biased <laughs> against Man United or Liverpool? You or wear red. Why do you hate City? You wear red, yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Uh, should Czech be benched? That's a Czech? Yes. Be benched? No, bench the back four in the midfield. Well, well you can't bench all the What do you want to bench Czech well, He for? wants to play out the back and Czech can't do that. No, when they say Leno, I thought it, I thought so that was So play Leno then. Has Clearly. he got feet? He better have had for the money they paid for him. Look, uh, uh, you know Emery's talking about rotating the goalkeepers. What's that all about? What happened with the first goal? Was he just... <laughs> he, he just <laughs> Pete? Yeah. What about, the... what about Bellerine? No, but why didn't he, uh, like, try? He just didn't because see he, got, he couldn't see the two central central defenders were in his line of fire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Paul can out make up with me. <laughs> Paul can't <laughs> <exactly. laughs> find his glasses. I couldn't find my glasses. <laughs> That's very true. Paul's glasses, like, there, and he's like... This. <laughs> Dan. Really? Yes, yes. Sorry, Gav. Yes. <laughs> now, I was just going to say, Emery and, and goalkeepers, uh, you know, you, you, you said there, like, Paul sounded like it was ridiculous to rotate the goalkeepers. It is ridiculous. This is something that, that he's done he's done before, but it's something he believes in. If you remember, he had the whole thing with, 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 with Trap and, and Areola, and before that it was it was Cidigo at PSG, and, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure if memory serves, uh, before uh, uh, he did the same thing at Valencia, I think 
even at Almeria, he might have rotated. Um, so uh, this is something that he thinks it keeps them, it can keep them on their toes if there isn't an established number one. And, and it's important to have two very good, I've never heard priced, uh, so much rubbish in all my life. What Gab's saying or oh, the only it, time, it is the a only minority time, opinion. The only time that I, I, I witnessed rotating the goalkeepers was England with Clements and Peter Shilton. Where are you looking? No, if where, you, where are you looking? I'm looking into the sky look because I'm just, I'm just look, waxing, look, 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 I'm, just, I'm just waxing lyrically about those days when England had two incredible goalkeepers. Look at number one. How and you could rotate that? them. I tell you what, no wonder Nickel gets confused because the cue lights in these cameras. Well, just it's lights all over the shot. difficult at red. It's a cue light on the jib, there's no cue lights in these other ones. <laughs> yeah, when the light goes round, look. When? What? Look at the number one. Go to Paul's camera and the number one. I didn't even know. I didn't even know that was my camera. <laughs> my name's not Dan no, Thomas. He, listen, he didn't even know it was a camera. <laughs> no, I did. I thought it was his a camera. camera. It was a television. <laughs> <Which one laughs> camera? Next, see, two. Red. That's a camera. Red. Red light. So how come you've got four cameras? What do you mean? Take your glasses off. <laughs> Look at off. Look at the camera. Oh, no. Paul. Put the light on. How does it go on, everybody? Look how small his eyes are. Who? Paul. Tell you what. <laughs> Somebody's oh, you've got your eyes. filthy mitts all over me glasses now. I can't Somebody you you really that. see the old... Uh... Who said that? <laughs> hey, hey. You see the bugle pretty well without the glasses on. See, he's always got to resort to, to oh. personal insults. I know. Damn, I know. I've got some issues. I'm, I must have some insecurities <laughs> about myself. <laughs> that's why you lash out. Right, that's it. Were there any positives from Arsenal today? No. Right. Who, oh, is, oh, Lord. <laughs> who is the best striker in the world? And why is it Sergio Aguero? I don't mean anyone. Okay, right. Best striker in the world, Paul. You're a striker. Harry Kane. Really? Oh my goodness! All right, Fred Flintstone. Look, <laughs> whatever name I come up with, you give me a custard pie right in the mush. Fred Flintstone. Harry Kane. <laughs> and don't throw. He's not never scored a goal in August and all that rubbish. Yeah, but he scored a thousand in the rest of the season. Harry Kane. And you know, Fred Flintstone, by the way, children, was a cartoon back in the 1980s. I'll was... tell you what, what, Fred with the ball was decent. Oh, his bowling technique was good. It was Very a little good. bit Very good. Hogba penalty-esque. <laughs> little twinkle toes. All right, who's, who's the best centre forward in the world, Craig? Uh, Ronaldo. Oh, oh, oh. oh. What's, What's wrong? I, I, for some reason, I didn't see Ronaldo as a centre forward, as a pure number nine. Yeah, I know, he's pretty <laughs> Clock. How do I do that? I don't Clock. know why I do that. Right, last one. Klopp always brings up an issue about Ramos in press conferences three what? months after the Champions League final, yet you choose to ignore it and pick on Mourinho. It's really <laughs> an agenda, isn't it? Yeah, it is an agenda. We hate... No, Manchester I mentioned United. Klopp last week, actually. I said, sick of him going on about this Ramos thing. Just let it we go. picked it up a couple of weeks ago with Stevie, but Stevie, but to be honest, for ourselves to you, because... Uh... Got the old blinkers on? Yep, there can it is. It, the old fan can only see it one way. Uh, that is it. Thank you, you very much. my way. Uh, welcome. Which camera should we say goodbye to Gab on? Oh, there it is, the red Where one. Where is he? <laughs> oh, that's a camera. Bye, oh, okay, Gab. Right. Gab's only got one camera in his house, that's it. Just to stare it down, that is it. Uh, Gab's not back now for another week. Good. I'll tell you, we see you tomorrow, though. <laughs> Wing backs galore. Stuart Robson will return. Why are you off tomorrow? Because I've got friends from the UK. Ooh. Friends. So friends from the UK. <laughs> so UFC lot can get stuff. <laughs>